Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Kathy Cairo, and thank you for joining us tonight. We um, are just excited to have you uh, jump on with us for tonight's Transition Tuesday. I feel like I shouldn't need to introduce myself because I talk to a lot of you throughout the week, and many of you have uh, been to several of our um, seminars and events. But I wanted to take a moment, let you know my name is Kathy Cairo. I'm a realtor with Keller Williams Greater Columbus. I have a great team uh, that works with me. Uh, one of them's online with us tonight. Uh, um, Mary Blackstone helps me with Downsize Columbus. But our goal, uh, both as a real estate team and also with Downsize Columbus, is to try to keep you informed and educated on the real estate market and how it changes, and especially as it relates to those of you who are downsizing. And so tonight's Transition Tuesday deals with the residential side of downsizing. Um, I don't, there's really no way to say it except we have just been on a wild ride for the past several years in the real estate market. And if we thought we were on a wild ride up until 2021, we, it, the, the, the uh, lid has just really blown off our market um, in this year. Uh, I'm talking to people who I met with last fall and now they're ready to sell their homes and I've had to go back and, and uh, reintroduce them to the market because even in 2021, the market has changed tremendously. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. We're going to talk about the value of your home. We're going to talk about what the market is like and uh, what, it, uh, what uh, you should be considering if you want to take advantage of it. So we're going to start by talking about very simply, is this your year? Um, is 2021 the year that you have been waiting for to uh, sell your home? So let me first tell you just in a graphic way what it's like to be a homeowner in 2021 and put your home on the market. All of the chips in a poker table move to your side of the table. In a normal real estate market, the purchase contract is negotiated between the buyer and the seller. Uh, you give a little, you get a little, and everybody gets to the uh, table with some level of compromise. In this market, there is no uh, compromise. When we meet with buyers who wish to buy a home in this market, what we're telling them is that there is no negotiation on anything. If you are looking at a home that's been on the market less than five days, what you have to be ready to do is to take those poker chips, shove every one of them over to the buyer's side because there is no negotiation. What does that mean? And why do we, why are we in this market? Well, it's simple supply and demand. We have not had enough homes on the market since 2012 in central Ohio. We should have, and I want to look at those numbers there on your screen, we should have 15,000 homes on the market to, to uh, be in an even supply and demand situation. And what that means is there's um, just enough houses on the market for every buyer who wants to buy a home. There is one out there. Those of you who have bought a home, maybe the home you live in, you might remember this. You looked at 20 or 30 homes. You went back for second showings. You made an offer. You took three or four days to negotiate and you ended up being in contract on a home. That's normal supply and demand. In order to have that kind of market in central Ohio, we need about 15,000 homes on the market. The next number you're looking at there is the number 30,000. During the recession, which was 2005 to 2012, we got up to 30,000 homes on the market. Now that was a market that was heavily weighted in favor of the buyer. That meant buyers could come in, they could make low ball offers. During those years, many homeowners were having to write a check uh, to, bring, uh, to bring to closing to be able to sell their homes. It was a very difficult market for homeowners. We just uh, had way too many homes on the market. Um, the consumer confidence was down and buyers were just having their pick of houses and their pick of pricing. Then something happened in 2012 to 2013. The first thing we saw is interest rates began to go down. That next number you see is an interest rate that's available today. I just had a buyer lock in a 2.5% interest rate 
on the purchase of a home. What does that mean to you as a homeowner? It means that the floodgates opened for buyers. Uh, buyers were able to afford houses that they weren't able to afford uh, seven, eight, 10 years ago. Um, we also have the coming of age of millennials. Uh, they're getting married, they're having kids, they all wanna buy houses. Many of them have two incomes. Many of them, uh, COVID meant nothing to them. Uh, their jobs are secure, they, they work for corporations. And I've often said that all COVID did to this group is send them home with time on their hands. They had secure jobs, they had good incomes, and they're working from home, which gave them time to get online and look at houses. So we just began seeing a flood of uh, young buyers coming in the market. Six, what's that number mean? It means that's the average days on market in central Ohio. Uh, your home goes up, your home goes down. Um, in, into contract. We're going to talk about that in a moment. 106%, that's the average list price to sell price ratio in Central Ohio for homes under $400,000. What that means is that we price your home right. Not only are you not negotiating down, you are very likely negotiating up. The buyer is having to pay on average 106% of uh, the list price in order to get your home. Now, in 2021, I don't know what the numbers are so far this year, but I'm betting it's either up to 110 to 115%. We have seen buyers willing now to pay 20 and 30 and 40,000 over list price just to get a home. 8.5%. Um, um, it, there is uh, what that tells us is that 8.5% of homes that are on the market uh, over 500,000, 8.5% of those are homes that won't sell. That means even on the high end homes, we're seeing virtually every one of them sell. To give you an idea of what that, what that was 15 years ago, we had. Um, uh, I don't know statistically, but probably 30 to 40% of homes, high-end homes, weren't selling. So again, even on the high end, we're seeing homes sell. Now, one of the things you'll hear me make a distinction of tonight is high-end and average sale price homes. If you have a high-end home in Central Ohio, and that is a, that's a sliding number, high-end in Grove City is different from high-end in Dublin, which is different from high-end in Olentangy, which is different from high-end in Gahanna. But if you have a high-end home, you may not get those multiple offers. You may not have your home sell in a day or two, but you still have far more buyers than you had even five years ago. We are seeing million-dollar homes sell in record numbers. And like I said, the 8.5% is that number was in double digits 10 years ago for homes that didn't sell. Um, if they were high end. And finally, for those of you who live in Reynoldsburg, congratulations, 43068 is the second hottest zip code in the nation. The second in the nation, not in central Ohio, uh, second only to Colorado Springs, 43068 is the second hottest zip code. Why? Those of you who follow the Wall Street Journal, there was just an article two days ago, ago about areas that were lagging behind the rest of the market 10 years ago are now the hottest market. Why? Because there, you can still get affordable housing. So areas that 10 years ago, 10 years ago, every buyer wanted North. They wanted Dublin, they wanted Worthington, they wanted Westerville, they wanted New Albany. Um, and the South areas, which were Grove City and Obetz and Groveport, uh, Pickerington and coming around to Reynoldsburg, were often second choices. Those now are the hottest areas because those are more affordable and that's where the buyer is going. The number there on your right is a screenshot of our MLS system. That tells you that as of today, we have 1,250 listings on the market. Now remember, I told you we need 15,000 for this to be a strong market and an even supply and demand. We have, we are bouncing around between 12 and 1300 homes on the market on any given day. So what does it mean? If I tell you that this is a winning market for sellers, what does that mean? 
Well, it means that in a 14 page contract, which as realtors, we all use the same contract. It means that every term that is negotiable in that contract is no longer negotiable in this market. You get everything. The seller gets everything in this market. You are going to get your the top price. You're going to have your choice of financing. You're going to be able to demand a letter saying that they are pre-approved to buy from a very good lender. You're going to be able to, uh, to pick the quality of buyer. You might want a 20 or 30% uh, down buyer over a 3.5% down buyer. You might prefer a cash buyer or a VA buyer. You have your choice of buyers. We are seeing uh, buyers we have for almost 10 years now, seeing buyers take the right to do a home inspection, which our contract says they have the right to do a home inspection. They have the right to ask for repairs. They have the right to walk away. They have the right to move forward. Well, in this seller's market, which we are now in our ninth year, we have seen buyers now routinely waive the right to ask for any repairs. They'll do the home inspection, but they're waiving the right to ask for repairs. Let me tell you what we've seen in 2021. And you're going to help me hear me reference this, that 2021 is unlike any year we've seen behind us. Because there are so few homes on the market, we are now seeing buyers waive the home inspection altogether. I've never seen it in 25 years. We are now having buyers willing to say, I won't even inspect your home. I will buy it as is. The next thing we're seeing buyers do is ignore the appraisal value. Our contracts state that the buyer's lender can order an appraisal and that if that home doesn't appraise, the buyers have the right to negate the contract or renegotiate with you to lower the price to appraised value um, or they have the right to walk away. We are routinely having buyers come to the closing table, say that whatever it appraises for, they, or I'm sorry, whatever they uh, offer you as a purchase price, they will give you that even if it doesn't appraise. What does that mean? We put a $300,000 home on the market. Someone offers 350. The home only appraises for 300. The buyer is saying, I'll bring 50,000 to closing to make sure you get that 350. So what that means is, and going back again to what I referenced, a lot of younger buyers are being squeezed out of the market. The winners in this market are the buyers who have cash and they are just waiting to give it to you. Another thing we see buyers doing, those of you who've sold a home before, know that the vast majority of the closing costs on selling a home are, are your fees. You're the one that pays the realtor. You're the one that pays the title insurance. You pay all the title fees. You pay the county transfer fees. We are having buyers now put in their contract that they will pay those fees for you. What does that do? That increases the net that you get from the home. If you uh, are selling a $250,000 home, your closing costs are in around 15,000 of that is gonna go to pay realtors and the title company and all of that. If you sell a $250,000 home, you're really only netting 235. Well, what if you had a buyer that says, I'll give you 260 for your home and I will pay all those costs for you. Well, now you're getting 260 plus on top of that, you're netting an additional 15 to 17,000 because the buyer's going to pay those for you. Um, and, and, and folks, I can't make this up. Every day buyers shock me what they're willing to do to get a home. Um, closing and possession. Some of you who are concerned about where you're going, which we're going to address in a moment, and the closing date and the possession date. Again, what did I tell you? Nothing is negotiable. You get whatever you want. If I, I met with a homeowner the other night who said, I'm putting my home on the market, but I want it until October. I don't want to turn the keys over until my new build is done in October. It's not a problem. We could write the offer. We could put in there that, you, that the seller retains possession of the home. Um, sometimes the seller pays rent. Sometimes they don't. But again, closing and possession is not negotiable. 
The, the buyer is going to do whatever you want to do. The final term is one we're seeing a lot start to pop up. Some of you are saying, I don't want to sell my home because it's so full of stuff and I'm going to have to clean it out. In this market, buyers are willing to clean your house out for you. You take what you want, leave the rest, hand the keys to the buyer, let them um, hire the junk hauling company or the clean out company. But we, you got a lot of young 35 year old buyers that say, hey, give me some beer and pizza and 10 friends and I'll clean the house out for you. And so again, we're seeing buyers willing to do things, do whatever they have to do to get um, a home. That's why we call it <clears throat> a winning seller's market is the seller wins on all of that. What is normal in this market? Um, this picture right here, and I'm not going to go over it in detail, but I want to show you this. We are getting so many offers on homes that we don't even print out the offers anymore. What we do is we put them on the spreadsheet for you. This is an example. This uh, is a spreadsheet example of a home we recently put in contract. Just to give you an idea, the list price on this home was $185,000. Look at the offers they got. 220, 210, 215, 215, 218, 202. And then we, down under that, it talks about the lender that they have, uh, what kind of loan they are. Um, and one thing I want to uh, bring to your attention is look at the um, appraisal where it says appraisal, 5,000 in gap funds, 500 in gap funds, 10,000 in gap funds, 8,000 in gap funds. What those are buyers are saying is that we will give you 10,000 over whatever this home appraises for. And I'm telling you, homeowners, as you're on tonight, this is not unusual. This is now our norm. This is what we plan on. When we put a home on the market, we know we're going to get 15 or 20 offers on it. We take a deep breath. We sort all the paperwork and then sit down with you and help you determine what is the offer that meets your goals the best. Uh, some questions, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, by the way, if you have questions, put them in the chat thing. We're going to answer them. But some of, some of them, I already know what you're asking. First of all, does price matter? If this is such a great market, does it even matter what my home sells uh, price is at? It is absolutely critical that your home be priced right. It is absolutely critical that you hire a realtor who knows how to price a home in this market. And here's why. Because there are still homes that are not selling because the realtor overpriced it. And once your home has been on the market one week in this market, seven days, you are now an old listing. You have now taken all those poker chips that were on your side of the table and you have shoved them over to the buyer side because the buyers are now trained. They know that homes are selling in two or three days. Actually, they're selling in two or three hours. We just stretch it out to get more buyers in, but homes are selling quickly. So your home that's been on the market for seven days or 10 days, it's an old, stale listing. Now the buyer comes in, they lowball it, they want to do repairs, and you have no choice because we have lost the opportunity to get multiple offers. The only way we give you every win in the contract is by getting multiple offers. And the only way we get multiple offers is by pricing your home right and making sure that we've priced it to attract all those offers. And if we price it right, the buyer will raise the price for us. We don't have to. Um, I wish, I, I don't wanna bore you with statistics, but I wish you sat in my team meetings and heard what homes are selling for when we price them right. When we're pricing them right, the buyer is raising those prices by 15, 20, 30, 40, $50,000. My own assistant, put her home on the market this weekend. Unfortunately, we're losing her. She's moving to Florida. She put her home on the market and it went into contract $70,000 over list price. And by the way, it went in contract 140,000 over what she paid for it two years ago. That's the market we're in. Number two, does staging matter? In a minute, you're going to hear from our stager that we provide you, our team provides you 
a complimentary staging appointment, you're going to hear from Sarah. What does it matter? If a home's going to sell anyway, what does it matter what it looks like? What, what it matters is, let me show you this is because this is where a buyer is going to first see your home, on their phone, on their tablet. So what it looks like is incredibly important. We want to get the buzz going on your home before they even get to your home. We want them to have uh, looked at the pictures of your home and gotten excited before they even get there. So by the time they walk in the door, they, they are already 90% sold on your home. How do we do that? We provide you a complimentary staging appointment and we use professional photography. Your home will look so good that you're going to email it to your kids and they'll say, that's great, mom and dad, whose house is that? So again, we want to make it look terrific. Do I need to, uh, to do needed repairs on my home? I get that all the time. Let me tell you where repairs absolutely matter. They matter in foundation, water, mold, and uh, some of the major mechanicals like roof and heating and cooling. Those things should be in good shape. If they're not, those can be showstoppers or it will knock your house into a different category, which is an investors will, will bid on it. Now, it'll still sell. You'll still get top dollar, but you are better off uh, uh, addressing those issues. I have a young couple putting their home on the market next um, in two weeks. I guarantee you it's gorgeous. It'll sell in a heartbeat, but there were uh, uh, some foundation issues. I said, even in this market, you've got to get that done so that the buyer comes in knowing that those are repairs. When we meet with you, when we come to your home, one of the things myself and my team do is walk through the home with you and let you know what's necessary to be done and what is ne um, not necessary. The next thing I get a lot is, why wouldn't I just sell my home myself or people I'm getting flyers in the mail and people knocking on my door and getting phone calls. Why wouldn't I just sell to my neighbor's son? Cause my neighbor has told me that my son wants to buy the house. If this were just a seller's market, I would say, go for it. You've got someone who wants to buy your home, uh, write the contract. You guys figure it out and go to closing. This is not a seller's market. This is a hyper seller's market. So if you choose to sell to that person who comes and knocks on your door, congratulations, you got your home sold. But the value in this market is getting 20 people who want to buy your home at the same time, competing with each other and causing that price on your home to go through the roof. That's the value. And you can only get that by listing your home in the MLS, allowing 8,000 realtors and their buyers to see it all at once. I will tell you this, and I hope I'm not lying, but I'm fairly certain it's true. I've not listed a home yet in the past, I don't know how many years, that I didn't pay my own commission with the amount that the price went up on the house. In other words, the buyer is going to pay all those fees because they're going to run the price up enough that many, many times we are netting more to the seller than what we listed their home for because the buyers in multiple numbers are, are raising that price for us. Can I do a sale of home contingency? For those of you who have a home to sell and you say, can I write in there that my home sell? My home, uh, uh, that the next purchase is contingent on my home selling. The answer is no. In most cases, you cannot. When you are competing on the home you purchase with 10 other buyers or 20 other buyers, the seller is not likely to even look at the sale of your home as a contingency. Now, I know the next thing you say is you say, well, why wouldn't they in this market that don't they know my home is going to sell very quickly? Yes, they do, but it also doubles the risk. They now have to go through the risk of not only you buying their home, but the buyer on your home buying your home. In a normal market, we would do that all the time because in a normal market, we are so thrilled to get an offer that we didn't mind if we had to wait for your buyer to, uh, to, to come on your home. This market, the seller's going to be looking at 10 other offers that are not contingent on the sale of a home. 
And unfortunately, your home doesn't stand a chance um, in doing that. How do I show my home to 140 people in three days? <laughs> Number one, by leaving home. Um, when we sit down to sell your home, we're, we have to list your home very strategically. What we're going to do is we find we we send you a stager, we get your photography, we find out what your timing is, when when are when are you going to be ready to hand over the keys, and we time everything by when you want to be out of that home, and then we tell you your home's going to be on the market on Thursday. We're going to ask you to go visit your kids, go to Myrtle Beach, do something for three days, because for three days you will not be able to come home. We will have so many showings through your home. And I'm not exaggerating. We're, we, you're likely to have 20, 30, 40 groups of people through your home in two to three days. And we're also going to hold it open and get another 50 or 60 people through your home. And then when you come back from wherever you went for three days, we're going to sit down with you, show you one of those spreadsheets, and we're going to pick the best buyer for your home. Finally, what COVID precautions are taken? What COVID uh, precautions are taken? Again, we're still working in a very COVID aware world. We're aware that we have strangers going through your home. We still require masks. We still have the hand sanitizer. We still ask buyers to touch as little as they can coming and going. That is relaxing a little bit. We are now allowing overlapping showings, meaning more than one group in your home at once, but we are still very aware of making sure that our group social distance and we wear masks and do what we can to protect each other. Now, I know this is the question you're all asking. Where do I go? What happens when my home sells? If there's nothing out there, where am I going to go? Well, let's talk about this. Great seller's market coupled with no inventory, no homes on the market means yes, you end up being homeless. So how do we deal with that. Number one, the first option is what I call the Tesla. The Tesla means you have the ability to buy a home before you sell. If you can do that, you are, it, you are, uh, uh, you, you uh, have a great luxury to do that. Now, there are ways to do that. We can help you get a bridge loan on your home as down payment on the next home. Um, we have buyers who say, look, I'm willing to use the house purchase exemption in my 401k to take the money out to move forward on the next home. And then when my home sells, I'll pay it back. But again, if you have the ability to buy before selling, that's the easiest way to do it because we put the sale of the home on the back burner. You move forward, find a home and buy it. And then we instantly put your home on the market knowing that it will be closed and sold within 45 days. Option two is the Toyota. The Toyota says that we are going to put your home on the market and we're only going to sell it to somebody who is going to allow you to live in or rent back your home after closing. I don't want to get too detailed with lender rules and all that, but there is, we can do that to a limit. The lender will allow the buyer to uh, let you stay in the home up to 60 days, six zero, six days after closing, at which point you have to hand the keys to the buyer because at that point the lender considers it a rental property. So again, we have a little bit of a buffer that we can start looking for homes. We can get a buyer who will give you some time in your home. But at the end of 60 days, we got to jump off the diving board. We've got to get you, get you going. Finally, three, I call the bicycle. <laughs> that is the move twice option. And unfortunately, that is what many people are doing. I have people tell me, well, gosh, I want to take advantage of this great market, but I don't want to move twice. Well, one doesn't go with the other. You either have a seller's market or a buyer's market. We are absolutely in a seller's market. If you sell and you do not have the ability or the willingness to buy before you sell, then really what you have to wrap your head around is you're going to have to sell, move into an apartment or temporary housing until you find a home and then you buy. Again, as I told you, we just don't have the luxury of a sale of home contingency in a market where homes are getting 20 and 30 offers on them. You have to think differently and weigh the benefit. 
Is it, is it the benefit of selling in 2021 so great that I'm just going to take the money and go live in an apartment until I find a home? Many, many people are not only doing that, we have many people deciding to sell their home just to take advantage of this market and, and get out while they, while they can with the terms that are available to them uniquely at this time. And then finally, I say the other option is the new build, is those of you who are saying, well, gosh, why don't I get out of the rat race and go build a home? The build of a home is still in the rat race. The only difference is the builder is the seller. That means the cost of new builds has gone up, skyrocketed in the past two years. In addition, right now, because of COVID and logistics and getting lumber and building materials, uh, builders are do not have the capability to absorb the demand. So homes are being uh, sold by lottery. Some builders are taking 100 names literally in a bucket, pulling out 10. Those are the 10 that get a house in May. The next month, they pull out another name. Those 10 get a house in June because there simply aren't enough to go around. And again, they're going to require you to either list your home immediately upon going into contract, which means you're going to move twice because the house won't be finished when your home sells, or you have to show the ability to close on the new build without selling your home. The builder also will not take a sell of home contingency. So again, building is still an option, but builders have upped the ante with higher prices, more deposit uh, risk and things like that. When I meet with you, we'll go over that with you. So what is the market worth to you? That's really the question to ask. People ask me all the time, how long is this market going to last? I don't know, but I can tell you that it can't last. The market cannot sustain what we're seeing right now, which is no homes on the market and houses flying off the market at the unreal pricing and terms that we have seen. Um, a couple things going on in 2021 that should be of um, should be in your mind. Number one, um, we are going to begin to see some of this government money pull out of the market. For example, we have a lot of a good thousands of homeowners who have not made a mortgage payment in six to nine months. Their mortgages are in forbearance. The mortgage companies have now gone to Congress and said, "Look, this can't go on." We've got to get these people back uh, paying mortgages. And so what many um, lenders are doing, if you had mortgage forbearance, you know exactly what I'm saying. You're getting the emails, you're getting the phone calls, you're getting the, the letters saying, hey, time is up. Give us a call to work out payment arrangements to start your mortgage payments again. Now, what most lenders are doing, and I would encourage you if you're in forbearance to call your own lender if you haven't already. Here's what they're doing. They're saying, okay, you've, you've made no mortgage payments for six months. That was not free money. We didn't give it to you. We just gave you a break. Starting July 1, you have to make your mortgage payment and you have to start paying back all that six months of mortgage. And how are we going to allow you to do that? We're going to require you to pay a minimum of one half of one mortgage payment that you missed in addition to your mortgage payment. So round numbers, your mortgage payment was $2,000. Starting July 1, you've got to start paying $2,000 plus $1,000 minimum for six months to pay back. Well, we are just now hearing homeowners saying, I can't do it. So those homes will start coming on the market very likely as homeowners decide to take advantage of high uh, selling prices when they don't have the ability to begin paying back the forbearance money. Some of you who are looking at that and saying, well, gosh, won't the lender work with me? Your mortgage company considers the last six months that they worked with you. Now the working with you is over. Now they're gonna want their money and they uh, are, are going to begin to, uh, to uh, start foreclosure proceedings on people who are not able to catch up. So I believe personally, that's the next wave we're gonna start seeing of people um, uh, not putting their homes on the market because they're not able to catch up with their mortgage forbearance um, uh, money. 
Um, so there's other COVID related issues, but ultimately what we need to see to change this market in central Ohio, we need to see more homes on the market and we need to see interest rates start going up, which they are. We're going to begin seeing interest rates go up um, uh, slightly over the next, uh, next several um, months. So what does that mean to you personally? Does that mean you run out and put your home on the market? Not necessarily. Um, you didn't buy your home purely as an investment. You bought it to live there. You bought it to raise your family. You don't sell your home purely as an investment. What I'm telling my downsizers is if you know that you're going to need to sell your home in the next two years, for example, you've got a child graduating, a child getting married, you are planning on moving to Florida, whatever it is, then do it this year. If you don't have a pressing need to move, and you don't, uh, you don't uh, necessarily need or want to take the benefit of selling in a hyper seller's market, then stay there. Everything is cyclical. But I do believe that the market is ticking um, on, this, uh, on this particular incredible market that we have um, had. So again, um, I am going to uh, go on and introduce our other guest. I'm going to look at some of your questions. We will begin answering questions at the end. So again, I want to introduce um, next for you, um, Julie Stein is with us from Treplis Communities. I love Julie and I love Treplis because they answer one of the questions, where are we going to move? Julie's uh, group offers rental housing um, specifically styled and designed for um, the downsizing homeowner. So I want to welcome Julie to the program tonight. Julie, tell us about Treplis and what you have to offer. Thanks, Kathy. We uh, really appreciate the opportunity to join Tr uh, Transition Tuesday and be part of the Downsize Columbus uh, organization. As you've well explained, um, you know, it's a really great time if you're interested in living a more maintenance-free lifestyle where you're no longer a homeowner, you're no longer having to mow the grass or repair your home. Um, you know, it's a great time as Kathy's outlined to sell, but there's always that challenge of where are you going to go and still maintain that quality of life that you've been used to for so many years as a homeowner. So at Treplis Communities, we are redefining 55 plus living for active adults. Um, we are um, age restricted community in that one person in our community uh, unit has to be age 55. So we are HOPA compliant. Um, and I will share with you some additional information um, as we start our slide presentation here. So Treplis Communities, uh, as I mentioned, offers active adult living, and that means that we don't have health care and we don't offer meals and uh, any type of care services, but our residents are very active adults and still many of them are working, continuing to work and be active and, and uh, involved in the local communities. Um, we find that our active adults are renters by choice and they no longer just want to manage the maintenance at their home um, and they really want to live in a neighborhood and belong to a community where life is really good and they have an opportunity to connect with their neighbors and really be engaged. Now, our communities are open and they're very spacious. And so I will give you a look inside the living room of our two bedroom plus unit. Um, our units have very open and spacious floor plans with lots of natural light as you see in the transom windows. Um, they also have oversized attached garages, which is not real common in this marketplace to find um, an attached garage with every unit, but we have oversized um, one and two car garages attached to every one of our units. There's zero entry and no steps into the shower, no steps in and out of the garage into your home, apartment home. 
Um, we do offer two outdoor spaces with every unit. So you have a front porch and you also have a back patio so you can really still enjoy the outdoors. Our one bedroom units offer a den as well as our two bedroom plus units. And the photo that you're looking at currently is our two uh, bedroom plus unit. And behind the barn door is the den and that unit. So as people have gone to working from home, um, this is a great opportunity in, in our uh, communities to live in a, a apartment home that really gives you that space, that separated space as an officer den. Now our uh, properties all have universal design elements built into them and integrated, which means that, you know, we really are providing for accessibility for everyone in that there's wider hallways and there's zero entry into the shower or uh, there's task lighting. Um, you're going to find that your electrical outlets are higher on the wall so you don't have to bend over as far. So lots of um, really great features for aging in place and again for accessibility. And then our units also have gourmet kitchens that have granite countertops, stainless steel appliances. Um, our units even have uh, gas stoves. So really all the comforts that you would find in a single family home, but in apartment community. And I might mention too that we do offer uh, laundry rooms uh, within our units as well. So you don't have to go to the laundromat. Now we know that um, you'll want to live in our community for a long time. And we, um, we really are proud that we offer our residents a very engaging experience with their neighbors. We offer a robust calendar of events, um, obviously, which have been amended during COVID, but we're starting to see some reopening. Um, and those events happen in the Commons, which is a resort style or resort quality clubhouse um, in the community, it's about 5,000 square feet of space. And you're looking at that on our screen right now. Uh, we also uh, have in this facility, we have a nice billiards room. We have a nice full comprehensive fitness center. There's a business center if you need to do some work uh, from the business center. We have um, you know, lots of opportunity for outdoor engagement at the commons as well. We have a very large patio with a fire pit and barbecue grill. Um, we also offer at the commons a, a community garden, which is wonderful time to engage with your neighbors and yet still have some fresh produce like you would in a single family home in your own garden. So we're very proud of the, the premium amenities that we offer um, in addition to the social engagement and that calendar of events. Um, we do have a resident activities committee that drives those activities. It's not a program or um, you know, some type of a, uh, leader, basically. You, you all kind of steer your own ship. You have an opportunity to really pursue those things that you have interest in um, for that social engagement with your neighbors. Now, as I go forth here, um, I wanted to mention too that, you know, our communities are all in a walkable and kind of a diverse neighborhood where you're really in a short drive and distance from shopping, dining, healthcare, um, and other services. We really, really want our residents to feel that they have this sense of community and that they know their neighbors and that they all look out for one another. And that really just happens organically over time. Also, we are a pet friendly community. We have a dog park um, in our uh, communities in Dublin, I'm sorry, in Delaware and also in Pickerington. And we will have one as we are now building two new communities. One will be in Grove City. The other one will be in Centerville near Dayton. In fact, we're breaking ground and having a ceremony there on Thursday of this week. So we'll have these um you know, dog parks available because we are pet friendly. And so those will be available for our residents as well. And as you can see in this image, um, we have a wonderful outdoor patio so you can enjoy some time with your friends. Since you're not gonna be doing any maintenance, um, we do everything for you, including changing your light bulbs. So with that, um, you know, I, I know that I can share with you all the information about living in an active adult or 55 plus community, but really I think it's a great experience for you to be able to hear from one of our residents, their experience uh, firsthand. And recently, prior to uh, the Downsize Columbus event this spring, 
uh, Jane Arthur Roslovic, one of our managing partners, sat down with Sandra, uh, one of our residents at the Redbud Commons in Pickerington, and talked about her experience. And so with that, I'm going to share a interview, a section of the interview that they had uh, with you directly so you can really hear that live right from one of our residents. Thank you, Sandra, for joining me today and talking about living at Redbud Commons, a Treplis community. Downsize Columbus is an event that we sponsor and have sponsored for the past few years, and we're excited to participate again this year. Well, thank you for having me. In November, um, I found out in very short order that I needed to sell my home, and it sold relatively fast in almost 24 hours when I put it on the market. And I happened to be watching a YouTube video and this Trey Plus infomercial popped up in the middle of my YouTube and I normally just hit skip, but something said you should watch it. I watched it all the way through and this was on a Friday. Um, I quickly finished what I was working on, took a lunch hour and drove over here to the Pickerington area, which is where Redbutt Commons is located and walked into the office and Brenda, who was amazing, uh, took me around and showed me the community. I initially looked at a one bedroom, just fell in love with it. I left here, my son lives like five minutes from here, went and grabbed him and said, come take a look at this place. And he was like, mom, this is really nice, but I wanted to be closer to him. So with a promise that I wouldn't just do pop-in visits. You lived in your own home for a long time. When you decided to be a renter by choice, what did you find to be some of the benefits? I kind of balked at the idea of being a renter because I had so much pride in being a homeowner. But I have to say that after living in a Trey Plus um, apartment, it doesn't feel like an apartment, so that's the first thing. It feels like a home, it feels like a condo. I feel like I can just age in place here, even though I don't consider myself a senior, but right, right, <laughs> I can right. I can continue to just grow and mature right in place and, and uh, my living uh, unit has everything that I need. When you were moving or right sizing, did you find that all of your belongings fit in your apartment home? I don't feel like I gave up any of my space, I still have my private entryways. I still have a two car garage and uh, I've been here four months now and I don't miss living in my home. I don't have the maintenance to worry about. It's It's been fabulous. And I didn't realize this before, when you're a homeowner, you're in it, so you don't think about like the maintenance and um, you know, the lawn work, even though if you're in a, in a condo community, they still do some of the lawn work, you know, you want to do just to kind of have everything look nice. And even here, I don't have to, I don't have to worry about the mulching. They did the trenching last week and I could watch the gentlemen out there. They're doing all the lawn work. I don't have to worry about, um, furnace upkeep or roofing or a lot of the things that you have to worry about and maintain as a homeowner. So it just gives me a little bit more time to enjoy life and to simplify how I go about living. One of the most important things about a Treplis community is the social engagement, like our upcoming Kentucky Derby party. What are some of your plans to use the commons with your family and friends or your neighbors as well? At some point in time, I will want to bring family, but there's a beautiful uh, patio area. I've used the walkway. Just yesterday, my dogs and I, we walked the walkway and went to the dog park, um, which was really nice. And uh, just to kind of let them run around and get some lex you know, exercise and, um, and being able to like reserve the billiard room if we want to play games. There's, a, I think, a wine locker that we can use. So there's a lot of things that um, we can take advantage of. What would you say to others who are considering an active adult community? I wasn't really even familiar with active adult community because I owned a home and I had planned to stay there forever until I retired and I went to all three locations within this area. I was just amazed at the design, the community, the amenities, and it just feels like you're, you're living on vacation at home. Thank you, Sandra, for spending this time with me today and sharing with the attendees of the 2021 Downsize Columbus your experience at Redbud Commons, a Treplis community. 
Doesn't that look like fun? I'm going to, um, we're, we're, I'm watching your questions here and we are going to get back and, uh, and talked about some of the treplos communities that are available and what the rent is and that sort of thing. So we do see your questions. We are going to get back with you and, um, uh, and make sure we get those answered. Um, our next guest tonight is going to talk to you about how to make your home sell for more. Now, you're probably thinking, gosh, in this market, do I really need, you know, does the market just take care of it and I don't have to do anything to my home and it will sell at top dollar? Um, the homes that are staged well and prepared still sell for more. In fact, I'm going to address a question that's been asked in the chat about doing things like paint and carpet mm -hmm. and things like that. First of all, we don't ever want to spend money that you're not going to get back in the sale of your home. We want to make sure that what you've done to uh, your home is an investment that you're going to get in return uh, when you sell your home. So I'm going to answer it in a way that um, sounds like I'm contradicting myself. Number one, you don't have to do any of that in this market to sell your home. If you're saying to me, Kathy, I don't want to lift a paintbrush. I don't want to replace carpet. I just want someone to take it as it is. Yes, in this market, we'll find someone who will give you top dollar as is. But the houses that are going above top dollar are the ones who've taken the time to get the home ready, have it in good shape, and, and uh, had someone like um, Sarah come out and help them uh, get their home to the wow factor. Remember, we talked about that your home is first going to be seen online and in pictures. We take care of getting the professional photography in there. And I want to introduce uh, Sarah Bean, who's going to talk to you a little bit about those extras you can do to your home to give it that value that it deserves in this market. Welcome, Sarah. Thanks, Kathy. All right, I'm going to get my slides up here. Can you all, Kathy and Brandon, can you guys see the presentation? There we go, okay, <laughs> thank you. Yes, so often sellers are asking these questions. First of all, what is home staging? Um, most of us are familiar with um, HGTV, TLC, and these shows that show, you know, staging your home for sell. But what really is involved in it? Um, why should I stage my home in this market? And how does the staging process work? Is it universal? Does it, you know, kind of shift with the different stagers? What is it going to look like um, when you work with the Cairo group and one of um, their stagers? Home staging is really designing um, for buyers in mind. So it's both a science and an art, and there's lots of strategy attached to it. It's an effective marketing tool. And that's why the Cairo group believes in it, because they see the results that staging drives, offers up, and um, your selling price up. Staging is a proven method to quickly transforming a home to sell for top dollar. So we're arranging and rearranging furniture, creating emotional connection points, and targeting buyers so that they envision themselves in your home. Staging is not interior decorating. So, you know, a lot of sellers are really good with design. They have beautiful homes. Um, the colors are beautiful. They're serene. They're welcoming. Their furniture is top notch. Um, they have great taste. But often there are still tweaks and several tweaks to make in a home that's even designed really well so that the listing photos really pop and that buyers can imagine themselves in the home. Staging is also not just removing everything from the house. Um, we like to have furniture in the house and some decor and, um, and arranging it so, again, that the targeted buyer is going to come in and want to open up their pocketbooks and pay top dollar. Staging is also not just turning on all the lights, fluffing a few pil pillows, adding some fresh flowers. Like I said earlier, it's, it's strategic. There is both a science and an art to staging your home for sale. Staging equals top dollar. Um, I gave these statistics before in other um, times we've been um, speaking to you, but if you are looking at homes that are staged versus not staged, 
There was a survey last year of 14,000 staged homes all across the United States. And those that were staged sold for 9 to 30% more than their unstaged neighbors. I mean, that is amazing to me. 9 to 30%. And a story that Kathy was talking about earlier of someone that just recently sold their home for 70,000 over list price, um, that seller was asked, why would you even stage in this market? And that's exactly <laughs> why. She said, because I want my home um, to sell for top dollar and I want that listing um, final price to be way up there. And she got her wish. So why stage? Um, as Kathy said, sellers are online first. That's just all there is to it. They are going to be looking at online pictures. Are your, are your photos and the way your home is prepared going to draw in that buyer? If so, you're going to get a lot of foot traffic and you're going to get several offers. Staging creates greater value in the buyer's eyes and it makes a great first impression. Um, we have found that, you know, unless they kind of have that hug, um, in a certain amount of time when they see the photos or when they're in their home, they may not feel attached to it and decide to wait. You want them to feel attached to your home and drawn to your home so that they're willing to put in that offer. And bottom line, like we've said, it makes you a lot more money. When I come out, um, when, when you list with Kathy and her group and I come to you, um, we spend at least two hours together and I sit down with you. We talk about your home. We talk about the things um, that maybe you have questions about. Maybe you've made certain updates and you want to tell me about those. Or maybe you have questions like the question before, do I need to paint? Do I need to replace carpet? Um, you know, do you smell pets in my home? Do I have too much furniture? All of those things I answer in those two hours. Um, we make checklists for each room. And a lot of times, it's, it's merely saying, you know what, we really don't need three chairs in here. Let's show the buyer how roomy it is in here. Let's show off this fireplace. Let's show off this bay window. So we want to find what the focal point is, and really showcase the best features of your home. And that's what, you know, a part of that is, is making this checklist. What can you put in storage or in your garage or somewhere that showcases each room? We also talk about curb appeal. When the buyer pulls up to your property, what is it that they see? Um, as I said, recommended furniture arrangement and flow, decluttering, depersonalizing, optimizing the space, um, lighting, windows, and in color. Um, as Kathy mentioned, you know, it really depends on your budget, your timing, and your capacity. If you have, you know, a month or two to work on things and you you know, you're good to paint a room or two because it's a really dark color or you have red carpet from um, the 1980s and um, you have the time and the capacity and budget to do that. We highly recommend that because that is more dollars in your pocket. But we work with, um, you know, all kinds of budgets and, and all kinds of timelines to kind of gauge where do we want to go and where do we want to spend our time, regardless of where you are in that staging um, appointment. I will do my best to use everything you have and give you the best recommendations to get more money out of your home. I have a few staging tips, just some basic things. Um, some you may have already heard, but just a good reminders for all of us when we are ready to sell our homes. That number one, disassociate. And I find when I visit with sellers, this one can be kind of the most challenging because our homes are our safe place, right? They're our havens. They're where we've possibly raised our families, had great memories made, birthday parties, you know, engagements, all of these different things have happened inside of our homes. And we are attached to our homes and our things. But it's important that we start putting on buyer's eyes. And so I encourage sellers, begin that process now of kind of disassociating from this, this home and seeing it as a house and begin viewing it as a product to sell. You want to do really well in your investment. And so one of the ways to do that is depersonalize. And that might mean putting away some family photos and some taste-specific wall art that you really love, but maybe the majority of buyers may not. We definitely don't want to turn off people, and we want to do our best to draw in as many good buyers as we can. 
Kitchens are super important. This is a beautiful kitchen and nothing wrong with this kitchen at all, except it's very personal, right? <laughs> all the food's out. If you look on the other side of the refrigerator, she had tons of her kids' pictures and calendars and things like that. And so it's just really important that you put your best foot forward and that you stage well. It may feel a little sterile even to you at times, but it's going to pay off. And this home certainly did selling for way over. This was a loft in a home of a beautiful couple who were downsizing. They had um, yellow walls, lots of personal art and family photos, and lots of furniture stuffed in this second floor loft. <coughs> Excuse me. They ended up choosing to paint the whole house a very neutral, bright color. And we did some modernizing and just decluttering using what they have. As you can see, there's a chest right there they used as a TV stand. Nothing super fancy, but they did super well and it showed so well the space. Excuse me. Aging tip two, declutter. Less is more. Show off your home, not your stuff. Packing begins now. This home had some pink walls and lots of clutter over 40 years. Again, just taking a lot of things out, using family and friends to do so. They neutralized the walls, which was huge sold way over and were able to move into their beautiful condo. Staging tip three, lighten up. <laughs> Neutral paint colors do appeal to more buyers and most buyers. And statistics show that when you have really dark walls, it can um, kind of turn off some buyers because they want it to feel roomy and light and airy. One way we bring in some light is through like white accessories, uh, maybe white curtains, um, so if you have really heavy window treatments, let's say that's over 10 years old, we may recommend that you remove those. Just let the light in because, um, again, that's more money in your pocket. Here's a beautiful home. It just had too many things in there. This was the living room, kind of heavy drapery, a lot of personal wall art. Neutralized it, changed the furniture, furniture around so that there was better flow, brought in some light colors turned out beautifully. <clears throat> Same thing here with a bedroom that was very dark and drabby and lightened it up. So let's say that you are three to five years out. You're not sure if you're going to sell right away, but you want to make some really smart decisions in remodeling or just updating, updating paint colors, updating some furniture. I also help a lot of people do this. Um, we transform their home with them in mind, but then future buyers in mind as well so that they get the greatest return on their investment. Here is a dining room in a beautiful home in Delaware, Ohio, that just had a lot of dark colors and dated fixtures. We were able to brighten it up and now they're enjoying it. I think they're going to sell in a few years, but right now they're just enjoying it and, um, and enjoying the brightness and the lightness of it. This is another couple um, approaching retirement and um, they have built this house and just um, had a lot of, um, again, a really dark kitchen kind of dated. And I walked them through the process of choosing fixtures, granite um, and paint colors to help them update their space. So let's say you are thinking of listing. Um, I have a staging cheat sheet that includes some of the tips I shared tonight that can help you get started. Um, they're just simple steps that even now you can start packing things away, donating certain things, um, looking at color and looking at different steps that you can take to get yourself ready for that listing and for um, calling your realtor and getting that set up. So I would love to help you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, one of the, one of the things I talk about when I ask Sarah to go out and one of the reasons we chose her when my team began interviewing stagers for the uh, possibility of including them in our listing, we really didn't want extreme home makeover stagers. We knew that staging could be intimidating and we didn't right. want you to feel like somebody was going to be coming in and, um, 
and, you know, telling you to redo walls and granite and tear out cabinets and all that. So as much as possible, Sarah, when you go through a home, you're working with their stuff, right? And just making it look better. Absolutely. Um, you know, again, that's the science of it. And that's where I get to be creative too. So it's that science and art piece where we're looking. So many of us have so many things in our homes that we're not completely utilizing. So we may, you know, again, we might put a chair in another room or we might take down curtains so that the light comes in more. We might bring out the dishes and put away other things. So really, it's it's a really fun process, at least for me. And I think that most sellers do enjoy working um, with me as well in just preparing the home to put its best foot forward and utilizing, I would say, 99 percent of what they have. It's always helpful to get what I call the third eye, that person looking who's walking into your house for the first time and seeing yes. it the way a buyer sees it and and able to, to uh, look past the way you live in the house. One of the things that I was struck with, Sarah, in your before pictures is that really that's how most of us live. And for sure. We don't live like architectural digest. <laughs> You know, we have shoe, we have shoes over next to the sofa. We have mm -hmm. magazines falling out of a magazine rack. We have four remotes on the coffee table. I mean, that's how we live, but that's not how homes are sold. And that's what you bring to the table. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and any of us who are selling, I always say, you know, if I were selling today, um, I would have to do these same things because when you're living in a home, it's very different than when you're preparing your home for listing. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you, Sarah, for being here tonight. We uh, appreciate it. And just a reminder to you that Sarah is one of two stagers that we send to your home. And this is a consultation. Doesn't cost you anything. When you list with us, we send Sarah out to get you started. And I'll tell you what, more and more, they love her so much. They're asking her to come to their next home mm -hmm. and help yeah. them ready. So, Sarah, thank you for um, uh, uh, being here. Thank you um, so much. Thanks, Sarah. Our next guest is going to talk to you about getting ready to move, to pack and move. And I'll tell you, I was talking to him before you all joined us tonight. And I asked him, I said, Steve, you know, you've got to be booked up and crazy because uh, I'm hearing homeowners say that they've tried to call movers and movers are booked out a month moving. So I want to welcome uh, to the seminar tonight, um, uh, Steve with Two Men in a Truck, Steve Barton. Steve, why don't you talk to our audience about what they need to be doing now if they're thinking of selling and as it relates to you in getting a mover lined up? Yeah. Uh, hey, thanks a lot. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with Kathy and her team. Transition Tuesday is really happy about that. Um, I think if you kind of revert back to what Kathy said early on when she was talking at the introduction is timing is very important here. Um, I would always traditionally say you have two months, two weeks, and two days to prepare. Um, you can crumble that up and throw it away um, because that's not the case here. Um, it's, it's, you're looking at about a two-week turnaround pretty quickly here. And the thing that's tough with the timing there is our schedule right now is booked out three to four weeks. So you have to really think to yourself, what am I going to do to prepare myself for the move? And then once you put that house on the market, how quickly is it going to sell? According to Kathy, we're talking six days average. And once that takes place, how quickly do you need to get out? So I would suggest that you have to start uh, preparing yourself now with packing supplies. And you're going to have to start packing probably a room per night. If you think that I'm going to be moving late May, early June, you're going to have to start taking care of all of that now. I suggest that you start getting estimates, contact local movers in the area, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to walk you through an estimate on what it would take to do uh, you know, an estimate for you and what it would take for us to relocate. But a couple of things to consider when you're reaching out to uh, these moving companies. And the, I will tell you the, the number one thing that you wanna to talk to that uh, uh, representative about is the hiring standards, and what sort of training do these individuals go through? And in my opinion, um, is it a drug-free uh, workplace? And uh, what kind of training do they go through? I think is really important because we train more on the experience because we know that it's stressful. 
Um, it's more stressful now than it was, you know, two, three, four years ago when you had time to prepare for it, like you did before. Now you don't have much time. And so there's a lot of stress that's involved in that. And so when we arrive, we want to make sure that our guys are trained to communicate with you properly. They step, they step in, they do a walkthrough and they are trained to put you at ease because they know what they're, what they're doing and how they're going to communicate it with you. And you know that you got the right person in your house that's going to work with you through that transition. So um, anything that, you know, would be about two months out would be uh, start shredding personal information because you don't want to take that stuff in transition with you, you know, depending on how far it is out. We all have stuff that's stuffed in a closet. We all have stuff that's stuffed in a basement that we've been storing. And so you want to get rid of that stuff in this transition. Um, say that there's items that you don't want to take with you. You know, I know that Kathy has suggested, uh, you know, we have estate sales or auctioneers that we've worked with. And why not take this opportunity to make some money on some stuff that maybe you want to sell at auction and those individuals will um, get it out to the public and they will be able to sell that stuff for you and you can make some money in this transition. And of course, we all have stuff that we do not want to take to our new location. And so, uh, you know, something that we've uh, started in the last couple of years is I got tired of referring a, like a, a hallway service or a junk service. And so in the last couple of years, we started offering a one stop shop where it's like, hey, we can come out. We can either provide you with boxes if you want to pack yourself. Um, we can go ahead and, you know, maybe you don't have time. I understand things are busy. You don't have time for uh, packing every single night after your busy work day or activities after work. So we can come in either the day before or the day of sometimes and do some of the packing for you and take that stress away. Um, you know, and then also the junk. If there's anything that's like left over, you know, I understand that not all furniture is junk, but you don't you may not have any place for some of this stuff. And so we will bring some of that stuff back to our office. You know, we understand some stuff is junk. We understand that some stuff is, you know, for charity. And we work with several charities that will swing by. And they will do a walkthrough on some of the stuff that we've uh, taken as a uh, haul away. And then they can transition that into, you know, people that are in need of that kind of stuff. And so um, it's not considered just junk. It's just a haul away service of stuff that you know that you can't take with you. So we can put together an estimate on that kind of stuff. Um, two weeks, I always talk about, you know, the two week process on packing, um, take a room a night. You're not going to have time for that. Like things are going to happen very, very quickly here. And uh, you want to make sure that uh, that stuff is happy. You're going to have to kind of put it in overdrive a little. And we deliver a packing material out to your location if that's something you're interested in. Um, I, I, I will not you know, talk about other services that are in our category, but I will tell you that um, I sit right outside of our sales floor and I know there is a reputation because right now the market is so hot that people are taking what they can. And you don't want to be in a circumstance where they gave you a price, you know, for a five hour move and your price is a little bit lower than, oh, we have another person on the line that's interested in a larger, you know, move, which is going to be more revenue for them. They might pick and choose and say, hey, I'm sorry, but we're going to go ahead and have instead of you canceling with the service, they will cancel with you. Or the, the, the worst part about this is they will cancel the day of. Um, nothing more stressful than that, knowing that, hey, it's Tuesday morning or Saturday morning that. I were I, I was planning on moving this morning and they said, sorry. And then we have people that call us and say, do you guys have any openings over the next couple of days? I just told you that we're you know scheduled four weeks out. I'm not saying that is like, a, you know, I guess, say to bash another business, but that's a reality in the in the circumstance that we're dealing with. So how are we different? I can tell you that when we have a particular amount of drivers that are driving our trucks, we have a cushion of safety on all of that, you know, and I'll give you an example. Let's say that I have 20 drivers available on a Tuesday, then we're only going to book up 15 to 16 trucks on 20 driver availability because we know that things can happen. You know, look, we're, we're working with a younger workforce. They may not show up. A couple guys may not show up that morning, but we have individuals that are right there ready to go that are going to get into that truck and they're going to go and they're going to come out to your location. So Overbooking has not been an op, you know an option for us ever. Um, I've been with the business several years, and that is something that we've done that uh, I think sets us apart. So, um, you know, I can't say I can't stress enough. If you think that you're going to be moving late May or early June, you're going to want to get on the phone and you're going to want to start planning 
I would suggest that you get on our books because then we can, you know, we can reschedule you on certain aspects. But I can also tell you that right now I have individuals that are in uh, homes that are, you know, 2,500 to 3,500 square foot houses. They're calling us on a Tuesday saying, hey, I just sold my house and I need to be out by the end of the week. We have a waiting list. And so our schedule is live and it's continuously moving with reschedules and cancellations. And so work with us. And what we can do is, hey, if there's an option that we can get you on the schedule because somebody canceled or rescheduled, we'd be more than happy to work with you. Um, Steve, there's some questions coming up that I want to mm-hmm. uh, ask you while I've got you. Yeah, and I run. I run. Patricia asked this question and I get it all the time working with homeowners. Many homeowners tell me, yes, I will eventually need a mover. But right now I just need stuff taken from upstairs to downstairs, from inside to the garage. I'm mm-hmm. lining up stuff for a donation. You know, we just we, we were talking about staging currently. If there's a, a reason that we need to move some right. stuff around, we'd be more than happy to come in and do, uh, you know, some transitioning. We've moved bedroom sets out of bedrooms and down into a basement and then, re, you know, move stuff uh, to other locations in the home. Or you want to move stuff to the garage to get it out of the house. We've uh, we'll do anything, you know, in between. We're an hourly service. And so when we receive the phone call, we will uh, walk you through what that invent- you, you'll walk through, uh, you know, the inventory with us. And then we'll be able to tell you, you know, like, hey, we'll be out, you know, for a couple hours and uh, we'll give you a price on what that would take. What we're finding is, is that many people, um, uh, your, even your donation people will no longer enter the home. That's both a liability as well as a COVID reason. Mm-hmm. And they're glad to take your furniture, but it has to be in the garage. They'll pull up the truck and pull it. So Patricia's question, we get a lot. And that mm-hmm. is, do you have some strong guys who can just come over and pull our stuff out? I know what I want from here to there. And so you're saying, yes, that can be scheduled. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Steve, hang on here. Cause we're going to, we're going to see if there's any other questions about uh, moving. We're so pre- appreciative of Steve Barton and mm-hmm. two men in a truck. He's a great partner, gets great reviews. And we're just proud to have him as a, a partner with downsize Columbus. Um, we've had a couple questions come up in chat and I'm going to address some of them. If the, my other speakers would also be available, have your, hand on your microphone if some of these are for you or you have input on them. Uh, Someone asked uh, about a realtor's commission. What is that commission? And if homes are so easy to sell, why should I pay it? Uh, You know, can't I get a cheap, cheaper realtor? And, and first of all, that, that uh, question is as old as the real estate industry, we get it a lot. So I'm not offended by it. And it's it, for me, an easy question to answer. The Realtors Commission is 6%. It's split between the listing agent and the buyer's agent. The question was, do you negotiate that since it's so easy to sell a home? And the question, the answer is yes. If all I was doing was have to get a buyer, I would reduce that commission because in this market, that's an easy thing to do. But that's not what you're paying me to do. What you're paying me to do is to, first of all, put your home in front of 8,000 realtors and all of their buyers, then you're paying me to be your advocate, your fiduciary negotiating on your behalf to make sure you get all of the terms in the contract your way and legally with language that protects you. I'll get back to that in a moment. You're paying me for 25 years of experience of knowing how to price your home right to be able to get you that top dollar in this market. And then you're paying me, quite frankly, you are paying for a name on the sign that virtually every one of those 8,000 realtors, when they walk in your house and glance at that sign in the front yard, their realtor's gonna say to them, the Kathy Cairo Group's one of the top teams in the city. And we have, they, they are a, a, a formidable advocate for that homeowner. In other words, we can't screw around because this team knows what they're doing. So again, you're paying for, you get what you pay for in our industry, just like any other industry. With 8,000 realtors out there, you can certainly find a realtor who will cut their commission for you. But what I wish I had online to bring to you tonight is the hundreds of homeowners who, because they chose the Kathy Cairo Group, ended up getting tens of thousands of dollars over list price, had every term in the contract go their way, were legally protected with contract language. And at the end of the day, they would have, they, they, they said that 
certainly maybe I could have saved 1% with another agent, but where would I have ended up? So one, uh, I, I don't, our, our commissions can be negotiable in special circumstances, and I'm happy to talk to you individually about that. But on the other hand, as a homeowner, if I am committing to getting you to closing at tens of thousands of dollars over what an appraised value of your home is, that little bit of commission is a small sacrifice to do, to do that. I also tell you that we are in an industry that does have a license. We're an industry that does have ethics, but we are in an industry that it's pretty easy to get that license. And 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 there, not all those 8,000 realtors out there, and I'll say it fr frankly, not all of them know what they're doing. Uh, just this morning, we had a staff meeting and I was telling my team, uh, which we do training every Tuesday in our staff meetings, I was telling them just this month, I've had two closings where I represented the buyer and because the listing agent was not experienced, did not know how to write a good to contract, two times the homeowners were literally contractually forced out of their house with nowhere to go. And very easily, their realtor could have put in protective language. But in both cases, my language for my buyers trumped their language. And we had a right to the home, a right to the keys. And they were scrambling to find a place to live because their home, their realtor did not protect them with the language that should have been in the contract so that they have options. That's just one example, and that's happened in the last two weeks. I've had it happen twice. So again, you don't want to skimp on a realtor in this market. When you have the best possible chance that we've seen in 40 years of every term going your way, you don't want to list with a realtor who is not accustomed to multiple offers, who doesn't know how to price your home, and who doesn't know how to get you to the closing table getting all of those um, extras. And we throw in things like staging and professional photography. And the other thing we do because of our experience with downsizers, we come sit at your table and help you walk through a plan and timing and tell you, you know, kind of strategically how to get, uh, get you ready to sell your home. And many times that happens months or years before that sign goes in the, in the yard. And we're very proud of that because our goal is to educate you and make sure that we are much more than just a sign in the yard or a picture in the MLS, that you have a whole team behind you to get you there um, uh, safely. Um, uh, a few people have asked about improvements to the home. Does it matter if you don't have granite? Does it matter if you don't have... Hey, no, nothing matters in this market. What it matters is where your home is going to be priced. In other words, if your countertops um, are formica, for example, do you have to put in granite to sell them? No, but we can't price your home like a granite countertop home. So one of the things when we come meet with you, we're going to show you all the homes that have sold, uh, sold. We can go online and see one of 30, 40 pictures of that home so we know what the interior looked like. We're going to make sure we don't overprice your home, that you're not competing with those homes that have granite countertops, um, and that at, you are competing at the same level of home. I call it the um, the three the three levels of pricing and the first level is wow we want that buyer to walk in and say wow and if I've overpriced your home meaning I've priced your home as if you have granite countertops and you don't you're not going to get the wow then on the other hand if I price your home well and you compete well in the price point the buyer's going to walk in and say wow the second test of that price is that realtor has to look at the price on behalf of their buyer. They're going to look at comparable sale da data. They're going to say, you know what? The Kathy Cairo group priced this home just right. If you want it, you're going to have to go well over list price to get it. And then the third is that appraiser who comes in and is going to test all of our work to make sure in on behalf of the bank that your home is worth what we priced it at and what it sold at. So, yep, I think we're worth I always say we're we're for those of you who are my age, you know exactly what I'm saying. We are like L'Oreal. We, we are not cheap, but we are totally worth it. <laughs> You're going to get every penny back in um, in the sale of your home. Um, Jill. Um, has said, uh, you had a, oh, Kathy, how long do you think it's going to be a seller's market? Is the bottom going to fall out at some point? Uh, gosh, hope not. It will, 
two things are going on right now that make it a seller's market. Number one, lack of homes on the market. Number two, low interest rates. Are either of those things going to change? Interest rates will start going slightly up. We have had, I call it free money and artificial low interest rates for a while now to keep the economy going. Already, Congress is talking about the Federal Reserve raising that interest rate. Do I think we're returning to a 2008 or 9 or 10? No, very hopefully not. A lot of um, protections were put in place that we wouldn't see that kind of crash, but I do think we're going to begin to see a leveling out and a stagnation. We're going to begin to see um, not the 7 8% gains we've seen uh, year by year. That is going to slow down. And I, I can tell you as a realtor, we are at a critical point now in our housing market. You would think that I love it as a realtor that homes are selling so quickly. Good realtors hate it. We don't like it because we we are a bakery with no bread on the shelves. And if I'm a bakery with no bread on the shelves, I can have one loaf and get $1,000 for it, and then I'm out of business. So as realtors, we are really hopeful we're going to start seeing more and more homes come on the market because this market, the housing market, can't be sustained at the level um, that it is. Um, all right. Any other questions before we let you go tonight? Just throw them on the uh, on the uh, chat, and we're, we'll be uh, happy to to help you. One thing, um, while you're thinking of your questions and putting them in chat, I do want to remind you that um, I wrote a book last year on getting rid of stuff. I look at a lot of your names. Some of you have already bought it. But take a look. Um, this is just a quick uh, video about the book, and then uh, we'll watch for your questions for watching this. Got too much stuff? Of course you do. Downsizing expert Kathy Cairo brings you Got Stuff? Get Help. The complete guide to the who to, where to, and how to of getting rid of stuff. This easy to use reference book features over 100 pages of Columbus based businesses and nonprofit organizations. Sell it, donate it, toss it, organize it. It's all here. New York Times best-selling author Peter Walsh offers his decluttering tips, and Kathy shares her insights from years of helping homeowners just like you. Read the stories of local business owners, find value in the things you were going to throw away, and be encouraged to start your own journey to a simpler life. Get your copy today. Got stuff? Get help. The book is $30 plus tax and shipping. Order your copy today at DownsizeColumbus.com. Look for the Got Stuff? Get Help link. That book comes to you free. I'll bring a copy with me if we uh, have the opportunity and the privilege of um, coming out to your home and sitting down with you. Um, and that's really where we're at our best. When we can come sit right in your home, look at your home, give you a specific value of your home, tell you what you can do to make that home worth more, and also give you a very realistic idea of how quickly uh, your home will sell, what's the best time to sell, that sort of thing. When we do that, we bring out a copy of the book for you. Um, so that uh, just as a thank you for letting us meet with you. There's no obligation to that visit. And, and there are... Um, there are, uh, there's really no, you can't do it too early. Like Steve was saying, you really can't do it too early. I, I meet with people a year and two years before they're ready to sell. And I really, uh, really love it if I can get out two or three months before you sell so that we can really take it at your speed and at your time and help you um, get your home uh, ready to go. A few final things I will tell you, because we're getting questions about um, timing and what's the best time to do this. One of the things we have seen in the past eight years in this hyper sellers market um, is that the market does slow considerably around September, October. And this is not be the traditional reason because of school starting. I really don't have a good reason for it, except I believe so many buyers rush out early that it sort of starts dwindling off towards the end of the year. Now, that doesn't mean that your home won't sell, but it means that rather than get 10 offers, you'll get five. It does slow down a little bit. So if you are Florida people, if you go south, or if you uh, really want to get it done this year, I would really recommend that you have your home on the market by late summer 
in order to avoid that um, drop off. Um, uh, question here, do you sell in Delaware County? Yeah, absolutely. We sell, our MLS covers Franklin County and five surrounding counties. I actually have two of my assistants who live in Delaware County. Um, and so we have great expertise all over the city. I, 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 my kids joke that I was a GPS before there were GPS because I spent all my time driving all over. And there are some days when I am in five counties in one day, uh, just visiting you. So we would love to meet with you after this uh, seminar. Uh, Brandon is going to be doing some follow-up work for us and giving you a call, seeing if there's any resources. And we would love to um, be able to sit down with you and help you lay out your path for where you're going and a time frame uh, to do that. So we'll make sure we get in touch with you. Couple things coming up. Um, uh, we have Mary put in the chat the date for our legal transition Tuesday. That's our last transition Tuesdays coming up two weeks from tonight. And we're gonna have Tim Jarvis here. Um, is it legal or financial? Help me on that. Uh, let me see what she's putting and I apologize. Kathy, it's financial and it's, it's June financial. 1st. Okay. June the 1st, okay. 6.30. I'm sorry. Thanks, Mary. So it is financial. We're going to be talking about your investments and about purchasing that next home, some of the options available to you, and, uh, and give you a lot of good information there. Okay, but I'm so excited to tell you that our downsized Columbus in the fall, yay, we're going to be back in person. We are so thrilled. We're going to um, do it at Villa Milano again. We are going to have it on Halloween. So masks are uh, encouraged. <laughs> Even if Ohio doesn't have a mask mandate, we'll have a mask mandate where you get to dress up for Halloween. And it is October 31st is the date we are um, looking at. Early enough that you can get home if your grandkids are uh, trick-or-treating that night. And um, so we're thrilled. We're going to have a great speaker. We'll be announcing her uh, coming here real soon. Many of you, I'm sure, have heard of her, might follow her on uh, social media or her uh, blogs and books, but we're so excited. So um, if you uh, are uh, want to jump on, we'll be opening the registration for the fall Downsize Columbus coming up. So excited to get back to see you guys in person. We'll have our 40 vendors back and all that sort of stuff and uh, we'll be ready to go. So again, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we will make sure that we uh, reach out to each of you to see what follow-up we can do. And if any of your questions were not answered, we'll make sure they're directed to uh, our panel tonight and you get uh, an answer. So have a good evening. Thank you for joining us and uh, we'll see you on the next seminar.